This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need hosting for your art portfolio, blog, or online store, Squarespace has all the website building, marketing, and analytics tools you need to build a sleek website and grow your brand. Hi. As you might notice, it's fall, which means it's time for fall things. Like pumpkins. Hot coffee. Wait, there isn't actually anything in here. And my obligatory case of strep throat. That's right, I'm sick right now. This hammock is really comfortable. I don't really want to get out. So needless to say, I need something kind of cozy to make this week so that I don't, like, die or something. And what's cozier than taking a variety of gourds and turning them into scarecrow people so that they can protect the gourds from, well, you know. <laughs> Why that idea is just so cozy, I'm surprised it doesn't have a live, laugh, love sign hanging from it. Falling down the I'll be honest, I had an interesting time forming a cohesive idea from this idea, and after a lot of strained thinking and searching around Pinterest, I basically want to take several different types of pumpkin and turn them into scarecrow folk to protect that kind of pumpkin patch a la Over the Garden Wall or House Moving Castle. You get the idea. Is this a good video premise? I can't tell. So the pumpkins I chose were Baby Boo Pumpkins, Warty Goblin Pumpkins, and Rouge Vive des Temps. Rouge Vive des Temps. I'm sorry, French people. From there, I just pinned a lot of images on Pinterest that seemed to match each pumpkin's vibe based on I'm images and descriptions that I got from this cooking website character design. And as usual, because I wanted these designs to look good together, I began by thumbnailing the designs out on my- <laughs> Just kidding. I've been in a perpetual state of feeling like I need to sneeze for the past three days, so I didn't do that. Instead, oh look, it's a word from this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Hi there. As you well know, I'm sick and can barely string together a cohesive thought. But do you know what else is sick? Not choosing Squarespace for all of your portfolio, blog, and online store needs. They offer dozens of professional and customized website and portfolio templates that made it super easy for me to create my portfolio website in just about an hour. I could customize everything from text to colors to various website pages, including this, a private portfolio to submit to an artist alley that I want to table at next February. Tools like automatic image scaling also made it easy for me to drop in my artist alley portfolio and table layout, which was then automatically arranged for easy perusing. And to avoid spoilers on all the pieces I intend to sell, I can also password protect these pages so that only the intended recipients can view them. Which I just showed to all of you, live on the internet. That's not all the convention assistance Squarespace can give me. When I sell in person using the Squarespace app, my inventory and analytics are kept in sync with my online store. Because yes, they also have an excellent e-commerce platform which can link directly to my print-on-demand service so that I don't have to fulfill orders and I can instead lie in bed and watch 25 episodes of Scooby-Doo in one afternoon. I don't know what you guys do when you're sick, but that's what I do. So if you want to build... Shut up! The cicadas here, man. So if you want to easily build a portfolio site while in a weakened mental state, head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash alpaca to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for putting up with me and sponsoring this week's video. Now let's make gourds human-shaped. All right, for the first design, I began with the Rouge Vif de Temps because I was honestly most excited about this one because the description I had from that cooking website said that they were the most popular pumpkin in Parisian markets in the 1880s, which gave me full license to design a spooky Parisian Victorian scarecrow lady, and who doesn't absolutely eat that up? Admittedly, it was kind of hard to find exact reference of what the French ladies were wearing in the 1880s, and by hard I mean Pinterest didn't give me exactly what I was looking for after one search, so I kind of generally guessed with the help of a bunch of different 1880s fashion plates, some of which were probably French. So since these are scarecrow folk inspired by pumpkins and they aren't strictly human, I wanted to keep with the tradition of them being constructed by materials a thrifty farmer would have lying around, and like I said, they would be simply animated and lifelike the way such whimsical folk are in Over the Garden Wall or How's Moving Castle, because that's what I feel would actually be the most disturbing in real life. Like comment below, would it bother you more if A, a human being wearing vaguely scarecrow looking clothes was hanging out drinking tea in your garden, or B, if a collection of rotting gourds, fabric, and sticks was doing that very same thing. I actually feel like that that might be a toss-up. So of course in my design her head had to be an actual rouge vif detente pumpkin which of course looks a lot like Rachel Maxey's horrifying pumpkin lady costume and yes that was somewhat intentional. There was really no way around it. Once that was seen it 
could not be unseen. In terms of silhouette, one of the reasons why I decided to go historical was because the Victorian period saw the bustle swing widely in and out of style, and it just so conveniently happens that the second bustle era sits nicely within the 1880s. You didn't think you'd be getting a historical fashion lesson when you clicked on this video, did you? So since bustles remind me very vaguely of the shape of this pumpkin, I decided to base her outfit around the idea of a pumpkin-looking bustle adorned with lots of ridiculous frills like ruching and pleats in true Victorian fashion. And listen, I do acknowledge that the amount of poofiness around the hips was probably not historically accurate. I think they liked a little bit more of a smoother hip silhouette with all of the party happening in the back. But listen, it's a scarecrow. Anyways, I paired those skirts with a fitted pinstripe vest bodice thing, which was inspired by this fashion plate, along with giant pumpkin 1890s sleeves. And I know this isn't the 1890s, but how could I not use a pumpkin as a giant sleeve? It was right there. Finally, the ensemble was completed with a lovely Victorian cornucopia style hat with a variety of gourds and aged roses on it, because I feel like that really echoes the French countryside, as well as a pair of autumnal gloves and oil lamp and a parasol that I basically copied straight from this image. I also left her arms bare to show that they're made of sticks and also added bits of straw poking out of her. I really just wanted her to look alive, but not human. And I'm not sure I captured that super well, but that was also the intention behind the creepy smile and the glowing eyes. Admittedly, these turn more into little illustrations than actual character designs, but I wanted to give them a bit of a vintage illustration feel. So I kept all the colors very natural and autumnal, basing the color palette primarily around the red pumpkin color and pairing that with rich jade greens. Once again, because Victorians. I also used a lot of pinstripes on her actual outfit because excessive patterns and trims were also very common in this period. And I finished the actual art off with some accompanying jack-o'-lantern friends and a little background. As a side note, I know it's tradition for you guys to name my creations, but might I suggest the name to include Viv or some form of Vivian because it sounds vaguely like Vif? And I know that's pretty stupid, but Vivian is also a good oldish sounding name. Anyways, up next is the baby baby boo pumpkin, which I thought were just so small and cute, so obviously my main source of inspiration was creepy little ghost girls like Samara from The Ring, but thrifty and sustainable. So following in the same trend I used for our Parisian scarecrow, I used a baby boo pumpkin for the head and gave her a little hat inspired by the stem because I read somewhere that the stems were distinctive, but I can't remember where I read that. And since the main inspiration for the scarecrow was various ghost girls, I wanted to give the scarecrow long spooky hair and a white tattered dress. So naturally, I used the materials I would assume a handy farmer has on hand, and I based these design elements around a mop, an old white bed sheet, and white Walmart bags tied around a belt for the skirt. Let's be honest, I could have just used one bed sheet like the classic sheet ghost, as well as most ghost girls because they all kind of look like they've escaped from the hospital, but I wanted to be a little bit more original here. So I arranged my ghost girl in T-pose fashion, gave her a creepy little toothless smile and one exposed eye, shaped some tube socks and converse on those wooden toes and called it a day. Admittedly, there isn't a ton of deep or profound character design happening here, and that might be the understatement of the century. I just wrapped some Walmart bags around a stick and I'm calling it a character, but I just thought this would be really fun and kind of stupid. I guarantee you, someone in the town where I live has probably made a scarecrow that looks something like this, so this is an homage to them. Also, fun fact, I live like a mile away from a pumpkin patch, and that's kind of cool in, in the fall times. Can you tell I'm running out of things to say in this voiceover? Anyways, let me take this as an opportunity to share my Procreate ink settings with you, because I know one of you is going to ask. It's the 6B pencil I found under sketching, and then the pen pressure settings are this, so... I hope this helps. Anyways, I used that brush, among others, to finish this up into a full illustration. I went with a graveyard pumpkin patch theme for this one because the ghosts need to come from somewhere, and I doubt that those are real, but neither are ghosts, probably. I actually don't know, so don't quote me on that, but I did struggle a lot with the coloring since I wanted a mix of purple-greenish tones to kind of sell that really dead graveyard look, and I also wanted to use a lot of warm autumnal colors to make it make sense with the other illustrations that I'm doing. So I ended up compromising by adding a weird orange sunset hue to the bottom of the sky and like orange and purple and green are supposed to look kind of good together or something. So I think it looks decent. I also added a cat and struggled so hard with drawing the yawning mouth. Probably worst cat drawing experience of my life. And I've been drawing cats since I was like three years old. So go figure. <laughs> 
Anyways, thus, she was done. And finally, we have the warty goblin boy, and even though I felt a gnawing temptation to slap a skin condition on a classic green goblin mask and call it a day, I did want to follow my trend of drawing slightly vintagey and historic looking scarecrow folk, so when I pictured the scarecrow for a field of warty goblin pumpkins, the image that came to mind was mostly a gruff elderly gentleman that would yell at the local teens to get off his lawn. Perhaps a bit obvious, but that's the angle I went with. My inspiration for this gentleman gentlemen mostly came from 16th century portraits of people made entirely from vegetables. So following with that logic, his head was a deformed warty goblin pumpkin with a squash for a nose, straw for eyebrows and beard, and cobs of corn for ears, as he is supposed to be a goblin. For clothing, I figured traditional farm clothes would be appropriate because I figured he would be clothed with old garments his farmer found to be inadequate for human wear. So I gave him a raggedy pair of overalls with the flap down, an old buttoned up nightshirt, suspended Vendors and a lovely patchwork hat, and I kept that nightshirt unbuttoned all the way down because this old man just doesn't care. He is gonna let those chest warts fly. I wanted him to look very grouchy and generally displeasing to match the wart ridden exterior of his respective pumpkin, so I hung him on several different interconnecting scarecrow poles and gave him a hunched back and very long spindly fingers, perfect for holding rakes and Coleman lanterns. I also assumed this gentleman might be a heavy drinker to aid in dealing with the copious amounts of children that trespass pass on his lawn, so I also put a keg of ale next to him. Comment below how you think this character drinks or eats, I'm genuinely interested. I wanted this old fellow to be the closest to a classic scarecrow, so I made sure to add extra patches and bits of straw sticking out of him, and of course, I finished off with a nice sunny afternoon and autumn color palette, once again trying to stick to earth tones rather than throwing in too many purples. But by the end of this one, I did occasionally look at all of the thumbnails and procreate to make some tweaks to unify the pieces a bit more to make them look like a set, which meant adding some purple tones to to this one into my Victorian lady and adding some warm tones to the baby boo one. I completed the piece with another pumpkin patch background and some warty goblins surrounding my scarecrow man, and I also made sure to add a few crows in the background of all the pieces and even some on the scarecrows because in my experience, crows aren't actually scared of anything. But with that, here are the finished designs. I hope you guys enjoyed these even though they were kind of a spur of the moment idea and they're admittedly more fun pumpkin inspired illustrations than functional character designs, but I did really enjoy enjoy working on them. It was just fun to draw some indulgent art to ring in the fall, and I also found an ink setting in Procreate that doesn't make me want to die, so that was also nice. As always, let me know what you think these characters should be named. I'll let you know the names for these and the moth witches in my next character design video. But that's all I have for this week. As a side note, I'll also have these available as prints, so if you need some spoopy wall art to ring in the season, you can grab some at my store. Link will be in the description. I'll also probably be updating my store soon with recent art, so stay tuned. Just designs from recent videos, and I also designed some spooky stickers, which I think some of you might be really into. I'll do that soon, and I will post about it on my community tab. Anyways. Hi, editing Kira. I forgot to record an outro. Bye. <laughs>